So while Mike is setting up, uh, let me say something, a uh, quick introduction about Mike. If you uh, uh, do know him, he is the principal engineer of EBN. He's an internationally, long, uh, internationally known uh, researcher and uh, an important, one of the most important people in the uh, semantic technology uh, area. Uh, he actually is a uh, local chair of the uh, 2009 uh, International Cement Web Conference uh, here in London. Um, he's been working in this area for more than uh, 20 or 30 years, <laughs> something like that. Um, so actually, uh, I think it's really an honor to have him here to give up the talk. Jesse, thank you for the nice introduction. Unfortunately, uh, setting up keyboards isn't one of my skills that I never learned. So. Can you have a detective splice? I'm uh, pleased to uh, welcome everybody uh, uh, to Assets of Econ. Uh, I uh, went through a little bit of the logistics and stuff yesterday. I guess while I had a chance, I'll go ahead and, and uh, repeat that for anybody who's new here. Uh, a couple of my colleagues uh, are here, here to help. Uh, uh, Suzanne is uh, right here on, around the corner on the side. <laughs> Doreen over here as well. Um, uh, Art uh, replaced Gaia uh, outside, uh, so uh, uh, in the lobby. and. Uh, um, that's, uh, uh, that's it here. So uh, during breaks and things like that, um, we'll be happy to you know, escort you um, into the uh, area for um, our office area for restrooms and things like that. And okay. oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Ian Evans is here as well. Uh, sorry, no, I, uh, you were here yesterday. Sorry, I didn't get that. Let's see. A uh, uh, couple uh, uh, logistical announcements as well for uh, tomorrow. Uh, um, uh, the uh, lobby of the building should be open, uh, and the guard can call us uh, you know, to uh, uh, go up and down the elevators and things like that. Um, we asked the folks uh, come in around uh, 9.30 uh, downstairs, and I put my cell phone over the key in case you have any trouble uh, getting in and out and things like that. So uh, hopefully that uh, uh, will work uh, well. And uh, uh, Doreen mentioned this, uh, her role was tour guide, that if people have some extra time, that the Iwo Jima Memorial is about three blocks from here and has a nice view of both uh, um, Arlington Cemetery and uh, downtown D.C. So in a short walk if you have a chance, it's the opposite direction from uh, the other one. Okay, 
Did I miss any logistics? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So uh, what I thought I would do is uh, tell you a little bit about uh, uh, BBN and what we do. Uh, and we've got uh, uh, six examples where we've been using uh, SMW Plus and kind of conclude with you know, a few comments on where, uh, uh, where I think things are going and so forth. So, and, uh, uh, we had a, uh, a lot of input from uh, uh, Doreen and Suzanne in this uh, presentation as well. So uh, basically, we're uh, a firm that does advanced technology uh, R&D in, uh, in several different areas. We're uh, essentially an early MIT spinoff, uh, starting in architectural acoustics, uh, although we're probably best known for our work with the ARPANET and early internet. So uh, a couple tidbits. Uh, Ray Tomlinson, one of our colleagues who is still here, uh, is actually credited with inventing network email and uh, choosing the at sign, uh, which is kind of cool. And uh, uh, BBN.com is actually the uh, oldest uh, continuously operating .com uh, domain. So uh, we were, we were uh, uh, the very early way of the .com boom. <laughs> Uh, we have about uh, 500 employees in Cambridge, Massachusetts headquarters, uh, about 100 here in, uh, in Arlington and uh, other folks in, uh, in other locations. Uh, Darko is our biggest customer, uh, and uh, uh, BPM was acquired by Raytheon about a year and a half ago. Uh, we've been uh, working on the semantic web uh, since 2000. Uh, uh, we started as part of the Darko Agent Market Finders program. Uh, Mark Reeves was uh, one of the PMs uh, uh, after, uh, after Jim Hunter for that. Oh, very nice. He's <laughs> a history. Right. I wore right. my demo shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, basically, uh, we worked on some of the uh, uh, early language standards. Uh, 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 we have a couple of things in the bottom of the screen. Uh, one of those is uh, uh, a uh, a version of G-Sports that uh, uh, we started from Mark called Simrock Central that we continue to maintain that has a number of open source uh, software projects. Uh, also the book, Semantic Web Programming, that John Hebler uh, was the author uh, of. That's uh, uh, a good book for learning about the Semantic Web for developers. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, let's say we've uh, developed a, a suite of tools for uh, distributed query federation. Uh, we also have a triple store called Chrome. Uh, that Ian Emmons was key off of all. And uh, uh, we uh, uh, do many of our applications basically focus on uh, data integration aspects. Uh, we do a fair amount of work with geospatial uh, semantics and uh, uh, also sort of more value added functions in terms of advertising data and uh, uh, ad visualizing. Uh, so uh, our start with uh, Semantic Media Wiki came uh, in a DARPA seed like in. Uh, 2008, and uh, the goal was to really uh, look at uh, uh, the use of SMW for crowdsourcing, and uh, uh, partly building off some of the earlier uh, experiments that had done, uh, been done uh, at um, uh, Vulcan in uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, using SMW for, for knowledge acquisition. Uh, so we actually set up a real experiment. Uh, uh, we were working with uh, Jim Hendo's group at RPI, and uh, we had uh, undergraduates there uh, watch uh, clips from the Survivor reality TV show, uh, annotate um, what had happened uh, uh, using uh, SMW Plus and should be SMW Plus, uh, and uh, answer questions uh, as a result of this. So uh, uh, Jay Bao gave a presentation on some of this uh, uh, at last year's uh, SMWCon. Um, and uh, uh, the results you know, were interesting, but rather inconclusive. Uh, uh, partly with a small sample size, uh, the, um, uh, it turned out that actually the groups that did the annotation based using just MediaWiki uh, actually did better than in answering questions uh, than the groups that uh, used SMW Plus. Um, I think part of that was you know, the amount of training, the amount of effort, and you know, the corpus was small enough that people could basically uh, read the uh, uh, wiki pages uh, and uh, uh, didn't necessarily have to use the query capabilities of wiki to find things. So, uh, you know, we'd certainly uh, you'd like to do some more uh, work in the area. There's certainly interest in crowdsourcing, and I think uh, uh, SMW is still used a very promising technology for that. Uh, you know, at that point, uh, we found it took some effort basically to uh, uh, deal with the multiple layers uh, software here, and that uh, was media with the SMW and SMW Plus. Uh, 
I think that's getting better, but uh, you know, there's still uh, um, some issues involved in, uh, in uh, coordination there. Uh, let's see, for, uh, we hosted the uh, International Semantic Web Conference uh, in, uh, in 2009 and uh, uh, decided to actually use semantic technology uh, as part of our website. Uh, basically, we ended up with a custom HTML uh, homepage and then used uh, SMW Plus for uh, everything behind that. And uh, uh, I think this worked out really well. I've been the webmaster uh, for ISW 2003 when we just had a, a basic HTML site. Uh, and one of the things that was really nice was that Jack Callahan and the other co-chairs could actually uh, you know, update their own sections and not have a, you know, a bottleneck of the webmaster uh, and uh, so forth to do that. And uh, I think it was even a significant uh, uh, improvement over the use of WordPress in, uh, uh, in 2008. Um, perhaps ironically, uh, the Semantic Web Conference didn't do a lot of semantic markup, <laughs> uh, although uh, I, I would attribute uh, part of that to the fact that we already had uh, the data that semantic web that already site and had a lot of the metadata for publications and uh, 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 that uh, material that was, uh, uh, that was hosted there. But, uh, uh, you know, this worked out well. And uh, no, I guess that was a good example of, uh, of dog food for the community. Uh, let's see, so uh, BBN doesn't actually tend to reorganize very often, uh, but we have actually had two in, the, in recent years that we're going to touch on here. And uh, uh, so in uh, 2009, uh, uh, we had an opportunity to kind of create a new wiki for a new organization. And uh, uh, we're really quite interested in using uh, SMW for that, given, given we have been using Tricky, um, which I'm not a huge fan of, uh, but uh, uh, you know, people were fairly familiar with that. And uh, uh, unfortunately, we had a fairly small window where we could really, uh, you know, need to get something up from the organization uh, uh, to use. So uh, the showstopper there really was the lack of support for page specific attachments. Uh, so you wanted to be able to have, you know, like an overview of that PowerPoint, you know, for uh, multiple projects or, you know, a 2009 budget multiple things and things like that. So that's actually been addressed in some of the recent uh, commercial SMW uh, uh, extensions. But uh, um, it uh, basically mostly derailed you know, the effort to use SMW at that point. And, uh, uh, there's a take two in that. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, Silk is a sister project to SMW Plus uh, under uh, Project Halo. And, uh, uh, we've been using uh, with, uh, SMW Plus since the beginning for our software development coordination there. And uh, uh, that uh, has worked well. Uh, it's uh, a password protected site you know, for uh, the folks that are involved in the project itself. Um, we use a modest number of categories and, and properties and queries, uh, mostly dealing with things like people, readings, and uh, uh, deliverables, and uh, things like that. Uh, in general, I think it's worked well. But uh, uh, the observation in our community is that you know the Wikipedia style isn't what at least many of our users most naturally gravitate to. Um, some get somewhat uncomfortable if there is a significant path from the home page uh, to the page they're looking for. Um, you know they don't tend to search, uh, for example. And um, um, we actually spend uh, you know some non-trivial amount of time kind of curating the home page uh, to make things. Uh, easily accessible. Uh, so uh, we had originally installed it about two years ago. Uh, uh, we had an upgrade um, recently for a new server and uh, uh, that actually went uh, went very well. And uh, uh, the deployment plan, uh, framework uh, in particular uh, also, uh, uh, also went well. Yeah. Do you, do you want to take questions uh, sure. as you talk or do you want to sure, I can. Yeah. So, so could you expand a little bit more on this Point about Wikipedia style not being a natural fit. Was it issues of people didn't like to edit each other's work? Was no. It issues of the uh, navigation system? And um, no, I think it was more just the, the style of kind of having, you know, self-contained topical pages. And so, I mean, like, we have a page even now, I think, that's like, you know, top issues. And, well, you know, that certainly wouldn't be a good title for Wikipedia. Uh, it's not necessarily, you know, a bad topic for a, you know, a site that's you know, very focused on a specific project, uh, for example. But, you know, so, so some issues with naming and, you know, I think more issues of, uh, uh, and, and to be honest, most of the users haven't 
invested a lot in trying to, you know, to really learn about the wiki. So, um, but uh, how to use it. But uh, uh, you know, most people kind of expect to start with the home page and, and be able to get there to uh, most things uh, from that. Do you, do you run things like uh, standing queries of the sort that, Je that Jesse showed uh, yesterday? We do. We have a few. Yeah. So things like meetings, for instance, the meetings link, basically. Yeah. Uh, queries for all of the pages of type of meeting or you know, telecom as a subclass, for example, and sorts of my data, for example. Mm -hmm. And a, few, a handful of other queries like that. But it have worked well. So, uh, like I say, overall, I think it's worked well for us. It just, uh, you know, was, there was a little bit of kind of, uh, you know, uh, mismatch from kind of the way I expect it to be used to the uh, to way I expect Okay. Um, so at one of our department offsites, uh, uh, Doreen and I and another colleague uh, kind of took an action item to uh, uh, look at using uh, SMW Plus more broadly uh, inside the And uh, uh, the application area was uh, essentially, uh, 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 customer relationship management and uh, uh, focusing particularly on uh, individual customers and the organization uh, surrounding them and uh, uh, what we call past performance data, which is basically you know, the, act, the contracts that we're uh, working on now and things that we've worked on in the past. Uh, so, uh, uh, some of the things that we uh, felt like we needed there was uh, templates to basically standardize the uh, content and uh, uh, make it easy for uh, uh, people to enter things. Um, and also some pattern or other mechanism for tracking changes over time. So it's, in this type of thing, it's actually very valuable often uh, to know that somebody used to work uh, uh, for uh, BBN or another organization, or they used to be you know, the program manager for demo, uh, for instance. And, uh, uh, so what we ended up doing was actually using properties like program manager and former program manager or former employee. And that, Sort of worked, but you know, um, wasn't uh, wasn't ideal. And uh, I particularly would like to be able to capture time intervals and things like that that, uh, that were associated with those things. Uh, so you know, some of the uh, uh, newer approaches like semantic internal objects, uh, you know, might be a way of addressing that. Uh, uh, that sort of things. Um, we also uh, like to be able to. Uh, incorporate and extend information that's available from other sites. Uh, so uh, uh, DARPA has you know, a fair amount of information on its website. Uh, unfortunately, they've never discovered cool your eyes, don't change, and basically improve the website, quote unquote, uh, uh, changing all the links and the formatting and the content of, uh, in the process. So um, that's a little less than you. Uh, some of the social networks, you know, LinkedIn tends to be a very valuable resource. You know, having some nice ways of automatically uh, incorporating and augmenting that type of information would be, uh, would be very helpful. Um, kind of uh, uh, in parallel, you know, with, with our, so, so basically we set up kind of a small demonstration, you know, probably uh, maybe 100 pages or so to kind of uh, show what it would look like. Um, and kind of in parallel, the business development staff, you know, came up with their own WordPress-based solution and. Uh, uh, and roll that out. And it's essentially maintained by uh, some of the uh, um, admin staff and some of the librarians. And uh, you know, I think there's some interest in, in merging these things, uh, but we haven't, uh, haven't done that yet. And this is certainly, you know, I think there's other people have talked from, you know, a good, you know, fruitful area here for the um, use of semantic things. Uh, so, um, uh, take two, I department the apartment uh, wiki. Um, uh, uh, basically, we had a second opportunity to switch and, uh, and uh, really wanted to make it work this time. So, uh, one of the things that we used was the uh, uh, commercial SMW Plus uh, for multiplies, which sort of added a fourth layer but with some uh, uh, valuable additional capabilities. So, uh, support for attachments, uh, for good things. Uh, uh, they provided some nice templates uh, that were uh, helpful and attractive to use. And uh, uh, we were actually quite attracted by. Uh, uh, the VMware distribution uh, as a means of uh, uh, getting and installing the software, and uh, uh, we had basically plans for uh, um, essentially a virtualized server infrastructure uh, that uh, it seemed to fit well with. Um, so uh, uh, Suzanne and another colleague uh, uh, developed the ontology that we're using uh, for that, and uh, 
the, the biggest limitation this time has been that the system is actually quite sluggish. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if it's the, the cause of the virtualization or we actually have an extra level of virtualization running the Zen there. I'm not sure if we actually converted the image to a Zen image, the VMware image to a Zen image, or if we're actually going to be able to put it at the that time of that. So, uh, you know, our plan uh, at this point is to basically do a uh, user native install. Kind of, kind of that. Uh, if anybody has some advice or would like to check out our uh, correct VM uh, installation, we'd uh, be happy to uh, do that as well. So, um, yeah. Just a question now. When you say sluggish, was it loaded or a virgin installation is sluggish too, or it's already loaded with some instances? Uh, there's a fairly, it's not a huge amount of data that's been populated. I mean, what would you say? A couple hundred pages? Yeah, and it was pretty much, it was slow from the beginning, yeah. I would say. Yeah, so. and I mean, we've got things like the um, uh, uh, the self instance you know, that are running on, you know, uh, essentially, you know, this. Uh, uh, Adjacent servers, you know, on our network, so we can actually kind of compare the two. But we haven't had some problems with the uh, uh, with the self installation, for example. So, um, so I think the uh, um, certainly the response time was a uh, a big issue, and uh, uh, I think kind of resulted in mixed response, even from some of our semantic web developers who were probably really quite excited by the technology. So we're hoping this is a temporary thing. Uh, but, uh, um, Suzanne, do you have any more thoughts or comments on that? No, yeah, I think I think speeding it up would help a lot because um, people don't like to go invest all that time to write a 10 second uh, wiki page. So I think. Oh, did your input? Uh, Suzanne was emphasizing that um, uh, the performance issues were a significant impediment. You know, we're getting multi-second response in many cases. Okay. Yeah. FYI, I think we can probably help you with that. Will's been working a lot on optimizing the JavaScript on the inside, making oh, the yeah. way that libraries load, and uh, uh, so for, for precisely this issue. Yeah. <laughs> when, and, I expect that two layers of virtualization is uh, probably a factor as well. Right, right. And certainly, certainly I've encountered that slow, you know, some slowdown with other types of virtualization. Other types of virtualization as well. So, so and like I say, I think it's a, it's a, uh, it's a nice delivery mechanism. Okay, and uh, let's see, I guess the other uh, uh, comment is we're, we're still looking for a good calendar to integrate there. So we got some good, uh, good tips yesterday. Uh, from this with the uh, support for uh, the current events and, uh, and things like that. But, uh, somebody has the perfect uh, calendar extension that we should uh, uh, plug in from the thing. Uh, in general, we uh, have not been using a lot of the other extensions. Uh, I think partway it's just been uh, uh, awareness and, and motivation, and so certainly you know, based on some of the discussions yesterday. So, uh, there, there's a number I'm looking forward to. Uh, Uh, here's some uh, examples of uh, some screenshots from uh, our wiki here. So this is basically the uh, BBN person you know, that adds some of their uh, employment and project details you know, in addition to the basic uh, uh, information that we have uh, about people. And uh, some examples basically with, with notional data of uh, the type of form and the result basically for uh, some of the business pursuits that, uh, uh, that we're following here. Um, so really our vision is uh, using SMW as a, a framework to integrate a number of internal uh, uh, data sources uh, within uh, uh, with BBN. These are uh, some examples of some of the uh, uh, other databases and things that we have uh, and uh, being able to link again, really link and augment this uh, uh, within an SMW is uh, uh, a desirable thing. One thing that may work well uh, is to actually integrate some of the databases using our as a distributed query tools, uh, which basically uh, can put a Sparkle endpoint that uh, uh, the SMW could use. Uh, uh, we'd also like to do more with the uh, triple store adapter and uh, uh, try it with our own triple store uh, as well. We haven't done that yet, but that's uh, uh, something that uh, we're interested in. Okay, 
A um, little bit of kind of you know, personal, I say personal perspective, it's really kind of you know, the group of several of us that we're talking about things. Uh, we really remain uh, excited about SMW. Uh, uh, I, we see it basically as one of the most promising tools really for generating user annotations. Um, uh, you know, as opposed to, you know, uh, generating our data from, uh, from databases and other things. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's still been pretty hard, you know, to get users to uh, offer semantic hard content. And uh, I think this is uh, a promising area. Uh, it's certainly uh, great for existing users uh, of MediaWiki. Um, uh, Intellipedia, which is, you know, an instance of uh, uh, Wikipedia that's uh, used in some of that. MediaWiki. A bit of yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, is, you know, seems like a golden opportunity. Uh, some of you are familiar with that, with other, uh, 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 similar copies that are from other organizations. Uh, we're certainly uh, delighted to see an active development in the user community uh, that's represented here, and uh, look forward to the rest of the conference. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, I'll just say that I well, I'm almost curious about uh, you know the, um, the the competition between MediaWiki and, and other software like Twiki. So I I wanted to know if you could elaborate on the thing with the um, page specific attachments. Um, yeah. So uh, so Twiki in particular lets you have um, um, uh, you can basically upload attachments to a to a given page uh, and then have to have unique naming or. Um, a little more complicated uploading the linking process, you know, like new So um, okay. that um, uh, was the major feature that a lot of people management with the race that felt was you know, missing from the uh, uh, Is there any deformed list? I think. Okay. I mean, that was 2009. Okay. Was that okay. So this was, yeah, this was 2008, basically, was the first time. Uh, okay. I know that's been also to the SMW Plus and Azure's right. page this week. So right. I was thinking, but I don't think it was around in LA. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we've been using them in the, uh, uh, in the last information. You know, some of the other you know, basic formatting things is more, more user preference and uh, things like that. But, uh, I, uh, I certainly find them in the style you know, a little easier to look up where it's going to be. Just yeah. wondering how far along are you in that roadmap for that vision? Are you building that? Well, um, I guess the simple answer is sort of thinking, mostly thinking about how to do it at this point. Um, 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 I, I think some of us, you know, with a little free time, would like to kind of, you know, sit down and sit down and do some of it. Uh, I think we want to resolve, resolve some of the problems that we're first. I'd, uh, I definitely like to see that. I, mean, you know, the, I think there's a huge potential for uh, linking it across data. Uh, with, uh, this is, you know, at least a step you know, toward, toward some of as well. So, but figuring out exactly how the pieces should be there. Uh, it sounds like a lot of people are really kind of uh, um, uh, share that vision and you know, they can take some steps towards that. I mean, clearly, we want to have, you know, for many of the Financial systems of records and things like that. You know, the authoritative version is going to be the database somewhere. It's not going to be the digital version, but we want this to be able to at least project it and add it to that. Uh, through that, through those databases. So maybe next SMW kind of can be a reporting process. Another question. Yeah. You just touched on it. I think it's kind of in, it's it's turned out for me to be an interesting problem is how you do federate query so from okay. an SMW hosted platform across data sets which may be run by SMW and may not be run by SMW. Right. Right. I mean, it's pretty easy to do query inside the SMW world, but you know one of the issues is that SMW wants to be the king of the world and very few companies will allow it to be done. Mm -hmm. so, so, so federated query seems like an important piece of this. You know, we've looked at federated Sparkle and pulled our hair out, right? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, I, um, 
I have only even used these Sparkle queries, you know, within uh, uh, SMW alert. Uh, and I think that certainly looks like it's the um, way to get something in there. And then I think having, you know, federation mechanism, uh, well, having the ability to query an external endpoint there, and then having, uh, using a federation tool, uh, basically, to do processing on that endpoint. You know, I think it is a reasonable approach. So one of the things that our the Azure Scout does is it, let, it lets you take the individual called data source ontologies and then use uh, swirl mapping rules to map the two domain ontology. So uh, you can actually uh, uh, you know, map different sources with different representations and into a common representation. So that gives the ability to uh, query just one source you know, that could have you know, multiple uh, data sources. Um, you know, some of the other approaches that people do is to use you know, the service option in Sparkle and uh, essentially do you know, their own federation you know, at the query level. Right. And that, that works, but it, it certainly requires a more complicated. And, uh, uh, and uh, adding to data sources, you know, requires more information. It's very simple. So, uh, it sounds like maybe that's the approach that we've been, been taking. Yeah. Get something working fast. I, you know, I think even uh, you know, being able to uh, do federated queries over multiple wikis would be, could be quite helpful uh, uh, as well. So uh, you know, that might be you know, an immediate target for the next things a little easier. First, you know, the um, assumptions about what the ontologies are on those wikis. You know, uh, so, so let me ask something more specific. I mean, are y'all going to try and put, put an ASIO query processing system into SMW or as an extension to SMW in the near term? We don't have any plans to do that. Uh, or, to be honest, any money to, you know, to, to do that. Uh, to, to get I think it's something we'd, we'd uh, be interested in doing. I think the uh, approach that I think I would do is to view it essentially as an external endpoint uh, that we're querying. I, I wouldn't particularly want to uh, Recode portions of ASIO and PHP, you know, for example. I think, I think you know, the general capability to have a good integration for that small uh, thing is pretty good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I guess, sort of along those lines, what, what other semantic web tools are you using at the VM? Um, we've certainly used a lot over time. We use Jenna. Uh, very uh, and that's uh, our preferred, you know, ARQ is our preferred Sparkle uh, processing engine. Um, we did a fair amount of work earlier with the Sesame Stack, um, and uh, you know, wrote a number of different kinds of sales for various, uh, various processing and things like that. Uh, uh, for one of our customers, we do a fair amount of uh, uh, C-sharp development. So, um, um, you know, the tool sets are, are less developed there, uh, you know, we have a, have a basic parser that we, you know, I've um, uh, been using for quite a while, extended there. Ian, Ian's a good resource on uh, um, what we're doing now. Uh, um, probably, well, we use Top Grade and Parse for uh, ontology development. Um, I actually, I, I'm one of the old timers, so I use them for visualizing intelligence by using Emacs nice for anything. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> great. Yeah. Um, so those are probably the major tools. You know, we use to, we use Parliament Commerce as our primary tool store. Although we have others, uh, others in the past we have worked on people for various ones. I'm happy to fire questions at you until <laughs> <laughs> significant has security been as a, as a capability in Wiki? And the reason I'm asking this, of course, is because, you know, we, Vulcan has spent some funds on a security extension, right? With access control list and LDAP and, and the rest of this stuff. 
and uh, primarily on a bet that nobody serious would take a wiki which was totally open in a uh, in most communities. And so you needed to have some, and plus you needed to have some way to make sure that uh, there's a lot of damage you can do if you if you can go in and edit properties in the ontology, and so we wanted to provide some speed bumps on that as well. Um, so one question is, is this bet, was this bet correct or not, from your perspective? Right? Was, that a, was that a necessary thing, a nice to have, a you know, checkbox which you check when you bid something but nobody uses it? Where, where, where does it? where does security live in that spectrum? Certainly, certainly for some of our customers, it's, it's a very important topic. Um, and um, you know, at some level, uh, you know, within with a larger Raytheon, what I've seen, you know, I think it would be an important, at least an important checkbox, and if not, you know, uh, most of our applications, and to be honest, I, I've been kind of worried with some of these you know, sites, like the ISWC site, you know, about uh, having it be hacked with the face and things, you know, you know weak passwords, or uh, I think somebody noticed that even if you do, it uses basic authentication and digest authentication. So, Passwords for the wiki are simply a clear bit of a little less than a deal. Don't reuse your password. Don't reuse your password. Yes, yes, yeah. So, um, and, um, you know, with the new uh, the new self server, we, you know, we tighten some things uh, down uh, a bit as well. So, you know, that's more nuisance and inconvenience uh, as well as kind of you know, denial of service aspects rather than kind of a requirement to get it deployed. Get uh, certainly, I think things like you know LDAP or OpenID as as good authentication mechanisms you know are are terrific uh, or or certificate based mechanisms. Uh, I've got way way too many passwords. So I'm not going to tell you very much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm mainly asking about your experience, not you know your experience in deploying things which are not for small time or smaller time use or internally in BDN where. Uh, you, know, you at least have other mechanisms to figure out if somebody stomps on something, who it was, and, you know, and address that and through another channel. Right. So I'm really interested more in clients. Yeah, certainly, certainly for many of our customers, it's, it's an important topic. And, uh, and I think, um, uh, I don't know if I would say it, it, it's necessarily a showstopper at this point, but uh, you know, if, if the better mechanism is right there, because I think a lot of organizations you know, are deployed with, you know, there's you know, been certainly a push to uh, deploy you know, existing Web 2.0 type you know, technology in a lot of organizations. You know, and I think in some cases, for good or bad reasons, you know, uh, uh, they've gotten a little bit more pass on some of the uh, uh, requirements that, that customer dollars have you know, uh, 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 I think that's certainly things that they're there's probably other folks here that you know have done that as well. Uh as a W So I think I think it's great. It may be um, uh, early or, or maybe even a uh, tiny bit premature, although it, it, to be honest, it's often really good to kind of have these things available for people who want to use them. You look at things like IPSAC has been available for you know since two thousand. Right. Other than DPM, you know, I know it's still very few people who learn directly on that account. The fact that it's there, and I think it's just another example. You know, it's an enabler for people. Before I get off this topic, let me, let me ask you one more pointed question. And, you know, feel free to say no because I can't talk about it. But you know, have, has DPM configured security for an SMW based system? For client, and did you have any good or bad experiences? So if the answer is yes, did you have any good or bad experiences? Um, I haven't. I don't. I don't think I have another. I, I don't think I have someone to Mike. Yeah. Um, I, it's worth noting that you know a lot of the um, a lot of our customers that care about security will. Um, stand up inherently insecure tools and then you know put some sort of 
uh, wall around them. Um, you know, put them on their own network. Put uh, in, in extreme cases, put um, you know, put some sort of SSL like authentication in front of it, or you know, that that sort of thing. Um, and and they're pretty used to doing this. They don't. Um, they realize that it's really expensive to build security into every tool, and so they have you know they have their kludgy ways of standing up insecure tools in a secure environment. Yes. Thank you very much. I made several slides.